Hi scientists, it's Miss Watson with today's lesson about invasive species here in Maryland. I found all these resources off the uh, dnr.maryland.gov website. What is an invasive species? An invasive species shows tremendous capacity for reproduction and distribution throughout its new home. It also has a negative impact on the environmental, economic, or public welfare priorities. These and other species are proven difficult to control in their competition against native species for food, shelter, water, and other resources and their impacts on economic interests and human welfare. Throughout, without disease, the predators that they contend with in their native lands, the spread of these species can be in epic proportion. Huge examples, we have the Japanese stink bugs. I always thought this was a weed. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot what it was called already. And then this type of catfish. What do we mean by native species? Generally, we mean a species of plants and animals that have evolved in the Chesapeake Bay watershed and have developed mutually sustaining relationships to each other over a, a geologic time. If you remember from sixth grade, mutualism is where the two organisms benefit from their relationship. So, either something's being eaten or um, whatnots. Um, for example, the squirrel will normally collect seeds of trees and bury them um, in hopes to have food over the winter. Well, sometimes the squirrel doesn't get to that seed and that seed blooms and grows into another tree. So the tree is able to spread its seeds further than the wind or any other organism can because of the squirrels. And the squirrels benefit because they get a meal. Certainly some native species can become invasive when a habitat is altered and their particular needs are met on a much broader scale. The impacts of invasive species. Introduced invasive species can include creatures such as viruses, as well as large mammals and everything in between including amphibians, reptiles, birds, insects, plants, fish, shellfish, and even jellyfish. In Maryland, one of our priority, primary concerns is the impacts of invasive plants on habitats that support rare and native plants. Here's a, a very interesting invasive species chart that I was able to find. Um, you can see it's a very nice flow chart. You can see that from invasive species, it can go one of three impacts. And each one of those three impacts can actually um, impact one of the other impacts. So for example, economic impact, this is the production loss at, because of the pests, which can lead to either environmental impact or social impact. Envir environmental impact is the alteration of original ecosystems, uh, especially like, uh, for example, in the Galapagos. Uh, the Galapagos tortoise um, are facing extinction because of an environmental impact from invasive species. And then the social impact is the abandonment of croplands. Uh, that one is a huge one um, because farmers are unable to eradicate the invasive plants or invasive animals that are um, inhabiting their croplands. So they are forced to leave. Examples of invasive species here in Maryland include, but not limited to, mute swans, neutera, which remind me of a very large rat, zebra mussels, water chestnut, phragmites, Purple loose strife, wavy leaf basket grass, and many more. Also included among species of concern are over 200 
introduced species that have viable wild populations in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. That's 200. That's not a small number. The purple loose strife. This is an invasive perennial plant that is spread rapidly in North American wetlands, shorelands, and roadside ditches. A perennial is one that does not need to be replanted every year, it just can continue growing, um, unlike an annual plant which needs to be replanted. Thick strands of purple loosestrife crowd out native plants and reduce food, shelter, and nesting sites for wildlife, birds, turtles, and frogs. Wavy leaf basket grass. This Asian grass was first discovered growing in small patches in the Patapsco Valley State Park in the 1990s. Scientists don't know how it got here, but within a decade it had spread to cover thousands of acres in public and private land on both Maryland and Virginia. These are the only two states where it's been documented. Scientists believe that wavy leaf basket grass could become even more widespread and damaging than Japanese silk grass, which it shares in uh, which it shares habitats. The red-eared slider. This is a non-native species that is now widely distributed in Maryland due to frequent ir irresponsible releases of pet turtles. As most of you know, Miss Watson has four of these turtles. Uh, thanks to students bringing them into her classroom. I cannot legally release them into the wild because they are invasive to our wetlands. When they become too large, I will be contacting DNR to have them um, take them and rehome them, but that won't be for a while. The red-eared slider usually is found in ponds, lakes, creeks, and rivers, and aquatic plants and a mud bottom. Sliders are frequently seen basking on rocks or logs, often with other species of turtles. Red-eared sliders are now found through much of northern and central Maryland. Snakehead. Whoa. The northern snakehead is a large, long fish with a molted snake-like pattern. It is an invasive species that can be found in Maryland and Virginia. While this northern snakehead has no natural predators in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, young snakeheads have been reported as being carried away by large birds or, or pre of prey, such as ospreys and eagles. However, once they have fully matured, northern snakeheads are not prone to predation. Um, I took a um, summer course this past summer, and one of our instructors actually said he catches these and they taste very good. Now, how do we stop invasive species? <clears throat> there are multiple ways. Uh, this is just a few of the items that I was able to find and compile for you. Uh, you can join a volunteer surveillance network, report any sightings of invasive species to the Maryland DNR website, clean or brush off boots and hiking gear to remove trapped seeds and plants, when choosing plants for your garden, make sure you're purchasing native species. Can't stress that enough. Please, please, please do your research when you're planting, especially this time of year. Crossing the border, leave plants, seeds, fruits behind when crossing the border. I'm not saying going from United States to Mexico or Canada. I, I mean, those are included, but I'm also talking statewide as well. Clean, drain, dry your boating and fishing equipment. Take the bait. Emptying your bait bucket into natural waterways can actually spread invasives. Have a good habitat. habitude. Never release unwanted pets or aquarium plants into natural waterways. Don't move firewood more than 50 miles. You may be transporting invasive insects too. Um, this is huge for those who like to go do camping. Um, please do not purchase firewood in your home area and then move it and burn it 
um, somewhere else because, like it just said, it can be transporting insects as well as fungus that can be um, invasive to those trees in that new area. And then another thing you can do is roll up your leaves and join in a local invasive removal event. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson about invasive species. Uh, make sure if you have any questions to include them in your summary. I truly hope you're all being safe and making wise choices and know that you're constantly on my mind and you know how to reach me. Have a great night.